This is the Freefly Ember. It shoots at 4K at 1000 FPS. It's lightweight, it's small, it can mount to a drone, it can shoot handheld. It does all of these amazing super slow motions at ProRes, and I have had so much fun playing with it over the last few weeks, and I'm really excited to share it with you. Let's check it out together. So the Ember is a super slow motion camera. It's awesome and I've had so much fun playing with it. So thank you to Freefly for sending me this one to play with and test out and make a YouTube video on. Really excited about having this in my hands and, and I'm excited to show you guys how much fun I've had playing around with such a crazy beast of a thing. This camera uses a Super 35 sensor. So there is a little bit of a crop when I'm shooting with, for example, this 12 millimeter Lawa. It roughly ends up being something like 20 mil. So it's a little bit tighter. That being said, that Super 35 does an amazing job in that it shoots 5K at about 600 FPS 4K at 16 by 9 at about 800 FPS and 4K at like the letterbox like 2.37 by 1 or so at over a thousand FPS and that allows for some insane slow motion shots. Most of what I shot was 4K at a thousand FPS at that cropped aspect ratio. Without a lens on here and all of the accessories, obviously, this camera weighs in at just 800 grams. So it's lighter than a Komodo. It's pretty comparable to an FX6 without anything on there. So it mounts on a drone really, really nice. And I can take off these batteries. I can take off all of these accessories, the handle. I can run it straight off of D-Tap. And that D-Tap offers a 12 to 26 volt input range. So you can run it off of the 14.5 that a D-Tap runs at or 12 volt, which is sometimes more common on drones. And it has that wide range of input put voltage so that you are able to mount it to different things. And that's a super useful feature to have when you're someone like me who wants to stick it on a drone as much as possible. Besides its small size and weight, it also has ProRes video. It has global shutter so that there's no you know, weirdness when you're whipping side to side or doing quick motions with a drone. Another consideration is that this only has internal memory. Because of those ridiculously fast frame rates, recording resolutions, all of that stuff, it has to be able to write that data really fast, so it actually uses an internal NVMe M.2 solid state drive, four terabytes, so it's nice and big, but the only way to get data off of that is to use USB-C, which transfers at like 250 megabits per second, so like a full dump of this thing takes like two hours. That's potentially a pretty big problem for data transfer. You know, in general, I have an extra battery sitting around that I can just keep it powered up because the counter has to be powered up to be able to take all of that data off of it. It's not a great process, but there's one of the sacrifices that we have to make to be able to get continuous recording at these insane resolutions and frame rates. So I think a lot of questions are gonna naturally come up about Freefly Wave, the original version of their slow-mo camera versus the Freefly Ember. So I wanna kinda of compare and contrast some of the differences between the two. First off, like let's look at this obvious form factor difference. The cube makes so much more sense for me for, I mean, really all purposes, right? It's pretty quick to just use their NATO mounting system, get a handle on here, a little monitor on here, and now the camera is fully built and ready to be used handheld. Yeah, that's a pretty cool little setup. This guy, however, you got this big old chunky side. It's kind of built to be more like a traditional mirrorless or SLR camera. You can see that once I mount this with the lens central, there's this whole chunk of the camera sitting off to the side. With this thing, obviously there's more on here than there would be when it's flying. It's perfectly centered and it balances well across the weight of the drone. So I love this form factor so much more than the previous version. This has an internal battery that does not last very long. This uses external batteries exclusively. Right now I've got V-mount on there. You get, they have adapters for V-mount or gold mount or whatever you want to use. It has 
DC power input. This takes DC power, but it goes into the battery first, so it's kind of a weird setup. Having this be completely externally powered with options for D-tap or V-mount or fully powering it off of this four pin connector is a great opportunity for drones and for however you want to rig it. It's not nearly as opinionated as to how you're going to rig the camera. Another big downside about the Wave was that this HDMI output only put out like, I don't know, it had to have been like six bit color, like absolutely no information. It was very hard to get critical focus on the monitor. This, however, even though it's not SDI, which I wish it was SDI, this HDMI that comes out to this monitor is the true version of what's coming out of the camera. So you can get critical focus. You can really zoom in and see, okay, am I getting this thing sharp where I couldn't with the FreeFly Wave? So that's a big improvement on this camera that's made over it. Physical on off power switch, big difference from the Wave, which had a button that you click and hold and it comes on there. And then you never know when you're gonna actually get it to turn off. It's still not off. Turn off, please. Having a physical switch is so much better. The biggest difference between the Ember and the Wave is the color depth and the dynamic range. So this has 10-bit ProRes color that comes out of it and it records straight to one single file that you can then use and color grade and do all of those things too. The Wave, however, was something more like 8-bit, probably a little bit less than that, and had very poor dynamic range. It was something like 11 stops, where a normal cinema camera has a lot more. So what would happen with the Wave is that when you're looking at something dark, everything that's behind it is going to be overexposed. When you're looking at something really bright, everything is going to be underexposed. It was very hard to get the critical level of exposure set on that camera. This has been so much more forgiving. There's been moments where we've shot it a little bit too dark or a little bit too bright. We're able to kind of control it. Having that flexibility in those high contrast environments, which turns out is most filming environments, having more dynamic range, more color depth is a complete godsend when you're trying to frame up and film at these crazy FPSs. It's just, it's so much better to work with this than with the Wave. It just is so much more forgiving. One thing that's new in this version is you have a changeable ISO. So I have options of 100, 200, 400. Being able to change that ISO gives me a little bit more flexibility when I'm already stopped all the way to f2.8 and it's there's still a little bit of light outside. So having a changeable ISO, even if it's just those couple stops, is a huge, huge help. Now, I think most people that are here to watch this video are here because I'm a drone person first and a camera person second. So let's talk about using this thing on drones primarily. It's an awesome form factor for drones, perfectly mounts in the center. It's nice and lightweight. That wide input voltage range, the high frame rate, the global shutter, all of that comes together to be an awesome package for drones. To test it out on drones, we first took it to the Mint 400. It's an off-road race just outside of Las Vegas, and we flew it over these crazy off-road machines that are kicking up dust, kicking up dirt. It's the perfect circumstance for filming with high speed frame rates. In addition to taking the camera out to the Mint 400, we also got to do a pretty awesome shoot with Coasting Thunder at Payne's Valley. It's one of the craziest, most epic golf courses in the United States. Let's go back in time to previous Paul where we were testing out the Free Fly Ember at Payne's Valley. Hold on one second, I gotta hit this tee shot. It's my first swing of the day, so hopefully it doesn't uh, end disastrously. Little right, but that's okay. We're gonna be using the Free Fly Ember. I think the first thing we're gonna go for is a little bit of a bunker shot. I wanna have the drone moving at high speed. I wanna see the bunker, I wanna see the splash of sand coming out, all at a beautiful 1,000 frames per second. Let's get down there and have some of these guys hit some bunker shots for us. Oh, this is so sick. Three, two, one, swing! 
And as usual on the day when you're trying to shoot BTS and do an actual shoot at the same time, we kind of ended up focusing more on the shoot and instead of talking to the camera about what we were seeing here, what we wanted to do was use the high speed camera moving as fast as possible to get that parallax, right? So the foreground is moving one way, the background is moving the other way and the subject is dead center. But then when you slow it down, you add in that super high speed motion and you still have a little bit of parallax happening in the background. I think that just makes an unbelievable looking shot. So cool, so stoked with how these turned out. After we got the shots with the camera mounted on the gimbal, we switched over and put it fixed mount FPV and did the same sort of idea, but high speed with a fixed mount FPV camera. And those shots, oh, I think these are the shots of the trip. They turned out so good. So for this video, I wish I would have been able to do a little bit more flying the camera on drones, but with this camera not being my personal copy, I wanted to limit my exposure as much as possible, right? So if it was mine, I would have sent it a lot more, but we have tons of examples of what this footage looks like handheld. We have a few examples of what it looks like on a drone, and I'm really excited about how all of them came together. The hardest lesson that I've been learning about shooting with super high frame rates is that not everything looks better in slow motion. And as someone that has always wanted a super slow motion camera, that has always wanted to play with super slow motion stuff, that's a hard lesson to learn. And you have to find those right moments, those perfect things to film when stuff is getting kicked up, when there's water splashing, when there's you know waterfalls in the foreground and something's happening in the background. Super slow motion is awesome, it can enhance things, but it can also make things just look slow. just like, okay, that, you made it look really slow. Great, that's not what we were going for. It's quite challenging actually to get really good shots with the Ember, not because of the specs of the camera, but because you have to use your imagination a little bit to come up with shots that really showcase the opportunity of super slow motion. So it's kind of, it's been a really fun challenge to find out ways to use this camera. And I can't wait to come up with different ideas of things to shoot with it. So if you have ideas of things that would look better in super slow motion mounted on a drone or handheld, let me know and I'll pitch them back to Freefly and we'll see if we can come up with something to do together. Thank you so much to Freefly for sending me this amazing product to play around with. It's been really, really, really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the camera, what you think about the picture and how much of an improvement it is over the wave. Excited to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. Stay flying.